Hey, welcome and thank you for joining Get Growing 101 Indoors. Indeed, we're going to talk a little bit about growing plants inside your home. And also, welcome to Bradford Greenhouses. This is my family business located just north of Bradford, Ontario. And if you're wondering, hey, why does Frankie Flowers know so much about plants? Child labor. Yeah, I was basically employed in a greenhouse at a very young age and really what ended up being my passion i continue to love to grow and inspire people to and grow and that's the reason why i'm here with you today to help you grow plants indoors so when it comes to growing plants indoors why do people grow plants indoors what are the benefits good for your health good for your air and good for your morale yeah your science has shown that by having green plants inside your home during the winter or in the summer by that matter really allows the release of serotonin. Serotonin is that little part of almost like a drug that gets released naturally in our body, in our brain to make us feel happier. So plants, science has shown, make us feel happier. Plants as well purify the air. NASA has actually brought plants all the way up to space to show the benefits of plants and how they can do air purification. You need a lot of plants to purify the air, but it's kind of neat to think not only are they making me happy, they're purifying my air and they're adding humidity inside to my home. And by doing that, you're gonna have healthier skin. So those are the reasons why you wanna grow plants indoors. Now, somebody that's watching right now says, hey, I'm a plant killer. I'm a plant killer. Okay, everybody out there has killed a plant if you've grown a plant. Amanda, have you killed a plant? Yes, I got really bad gnats. I know we're gonna talk about it. All right, Frankie, you have taught me a lot about plants over the years, but I still kill plants with kindness. And this time I didn't kill my fiddle leaf fig. No, no, instead I managed to overwater her to the point where she was infested with gnats. Yeah, bad gnats. You don't want bad gnats. On your dating profile out there, you never put out there, I have bad gnats, just to let you know. No, everybody out there has killed a plant, but the key is, is to try to pick some of the right plants for you. So let's talk about some of my favorite easy plants just to get you inspired right off the top. One of my favorites, which is just right over to your left, many different varieties of that, is called Sensevaria, also known as mother-in-law's tongue, AKA the snake plant. It likes bright sunlight, so a nice bright room, but what the benefit of that plant is, is if you forget on a few waterings, fantastic. It doesn't really need that much water. Another great plants that are out there are the whole family of succulents. Succulents are easy plants that can just be right on your desktop, right there beside your computer. There has been some people out there saying that if you have succulents or cactus around your property or around your home, that is, that they will take away from different uh, waves that are coming from your computer. No science to that. Just to let you know, there's no science to that. But succulent, an easy plant that doesn't need that much water as well. Another great plant is what's called Zamifolia also known as the ZZ plant. Very easy to grow even with a little bit lower light. The ZZ plant is a nice structural looking plant that is green and another forgiving plant if you're someone that doesn't need to water or doesn't have the ability to water that much. All plants need water though, really key. Plants do need water and care. Another great plant just to the front is what's called philodendron. Philodendron is also an easy to grow plant that will purify the air overall and can be in lower light situations. And then right beside it is Spathophyllium. Spathophyllium, also known as peace lily, is a fantastic, beautiful plant for low light areas, meaning uh, maybe an east or north facing room. We're gonna talk a bit about light in a little bit of time as well, but that's an easy plant for you to grow. And then finally, one of the plants out there that I think every home should have is aloe vera. And the reason why I think every home should have aloe vera is that it's not only is it easy, it's also a medicinal plant, meaning that if you get a cut, a scrape and or a burn, you can use that plant to kind of heal those wounds. So those are the plants that are out there that I think you should have in your home. Now some of the plants I want to tell you that you need to be aware of, and that is right over to my right, which is called Diefenbachia. Diefenbachia, also known as dumb cane, is an easy plant to grow. However, it is a plant that could cause harm if a child was to eat it, a cat was to eat it, a puppy was to eat it. The key is know your plants, know their names, and before you purchase a plant, if you have curious pets or curious children, type that in and see if they're toxic and or poisonous because we want plants to cause benefit, not harm. Another plant that I wanna make you aware of is really the palm. The reason why I wanna make you aware of palms is they're beautiful plants. However, they're a little bit more difficult and challenging to take care of. People frequently go to purchase those. A little bit later on, I'm gonna talk about some of the common diseases and insects they get. And then also when it comes to ferns, ferns are fantastic air purifying plants, but if you don't have humidity in your home, they're not going to do well for you overall. 
So those are some of the plants that I love that I want to get you motivated, but continuing through today, what are you going to learn? Well, you're going to learn about what are the common diseases out there? How to successfully grow a plant indoors? And then also repotting and also how I can create free plants for you. So if you're ready and you want to take the adventure, let's get growing.